That comment, I have 64 million reasons. That's it. That's the one that's going to get plastered to the side of buildings for crying out loud. And, and again, I get you just you never see that ever. With the amount of money they're talking about in these negotiations and these contracts and sort of the privacy issue that goes along with some of that, and, and that has even deteriorated over time. But to say it in a press conference with everybody there on, you know, again, record it, typically that gets sort of leaked out behind the scenes and, you know, if it happens at all, and then oftentimes it doesn't even happen. That was like right there. Yep, 64 million bucks. That's what we offered him. Ha! Can you believe that, idiot? That's really how it comes off. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I was, when I, I heard it, I went, wow. You, you just never see that anymore. So do you think it was more strategy or it was more, because, I mean, you guys would have Cam on. I just think this is more a guy that runs hot and is frustrated. And it looks like Jeremy Swayman and his agent, and they've had tough negotiations before when he had Tory Krug, and is a guy that's just fed up. Like, you guys are being unreasonable. He rounded up. That was Weasley. But, like, it's 64. Like, this is what it is. Just, like, figure this out. That's enough money for you. That's a fair value. It's a more than fair value for you. You guys are being unreasonable. That's what I think it is. I don't think it was a strategic move or anything like that. It's a guy that's just pissed because Cam Neely can be pissed. So... It was then an interesting week. Yes, Messi? Yeah, no, no. I was just going to say the only part of it that I, I said, I told you at one point I wondered whether there was some sort of wink, wink, nod, nod with DuPont. But you raise a good point that it was sort of, you well, know, there was, was a follow-up because Cam said earlier where they asked Don Sweeney, are you surprised that with Swayman's ask? And Don Sweeney said, no, a player can ask. And Cam jumped in and said, I am. Yeah. So it's <laughs> yeah. like it was obvious Cam was ready to go. Yeah, and, and DuPont clearly picked up on that. But I do think that Sweeney knew it was coming. Like, my guess is that sure. Cam said to him, how are you going to handle this? Or they talked about it. What, what are we going to do when this comes up? Sweeney says, I'm playing it straight. Neely says, I'm not. Okay, well, you do what you want. I got to negotiate with the guy. Yeah, you know, and I'm giving you a, a sort of scripted version of it. But something like that. I think Neely said, you don't have to say anything. I'm going to. He clearly wanted it out there. So that sort of led to an interesting week. Uh, that night or maybe the next morning, the agent, Louis Gross, releases a statement. Normally, I do not release statements or discuss negotiations through the media. Sure you don't. Right, right exactly. You don't, no, right, you never leak stuff through the media, Louis. Uh, however, in this case, I feel I need to defend my client. At today's press conference, $64 million was referenced. That was the first time that number was discussed in our negotiations. Prior to the press conference, no offer was made reaching that level. We are extremely disappointed. This is not fair to Jeremy. Uh, we will take a few days to discuss where we go from here. So since then, there's been no apparent movement, um, except that the reporting has sort of refined maybe what the Bruins had been offering to that point and what Swayman had been offering to that point. The consensus, you know, uh, Elliot Friedman said, the, the Bruins were at seven uh, at 7.5. There's another report that, I'm sorry, eight years at 7.5, excuse me, or another report at eight years at 7.8. Meanwhile, Ed, Elliot Freeman says uh, Jeremy Swayman is stuck at the high eights or at nine, eight times nine, or eight times eight, whatever, eight, 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 nine, up in the high eights. Uh, and so it's sort of been stuck there. But the, the further reporting is that now there's a emotional uh, sort of hurdle that the team also has to overcome because Jeremy Swayman is upset. As the agent said, he's disappointed. This is not fair to Jeremy Swayman. Uh, Pierre Lebrun, do you have that cut, Jimmy? Pierre Lebrun said this yesterday up on TSN in Canada. The two sides continue to talk, which is the positive part. Um, you know, despite all the emotion of this week, it's not at a complete standstill, I don't think. But, you know, Separate for a moment the, the, the financial uh, resolution that needs to happen. I mean, at some point, they'll find the number, I think. But, uh, you know, Jeremy Swayman, I think, probably is a little hurt right now. Yeah. And, and the reparation of that relationship is, is now part of this, of this thing as well, not just the actual contract negotiation. So I think it gets done eventually, believe it or not, despite all the, the drama of this week. But um, about how the player feels about things will be interesting. Okay, the reparation of the relationship is now on the table, not just the money. We now have to repair the hurt. Yeah, because it was so good before that. That Jeremy Swayman is feeling over being offered a contract that would make him the fifth highest paid goalie in the history of the sport. Right. 
So again, sometimes people are just looking for a reason to be pissed off. Like they're going to be pissed off no matter what. You just they're going to pick whatever reason they want. So and, and then the other thing is the more I listen to that, Swayman was already pissed off. He was pissed off all last that, year over the arbitration. Right. That's why we're here. In fact. Because the arbitration thing pissed him off, and he was looking for a reason to stick it to the Bruins, and now he's sticking it to him, or an opportunity to stick it to the Bruins. That arbitration was disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, it started to come out. There's an Amazon docu series on NHL players where they follow players around. This was done last year, and uh, Jeremy Swayman. There's a, a quote that was released about last year's arbitration where Jeremy Swayman said, hearing you're not worthy of what you think you're worthy of, that was hard to hear. You don't forget what was said. I wrote them down and looked at them the other day, and I had a couple of check marks. My biggest knock was how I was, wasn't was trustworthy in the playoffs. Check. So again, as he talks to Amazon late last year about an arbitration hearing that was almost a full year before, he's still talking about that. He's also talked in other interviews about the resentment that he felt in that uh arbitration process also talked about um uh what did he say uh during the year that he wouldn't wish anyone to have to go through that yeah it's the, okay the something horrors of arbitration the horror of being offered three and a half million dollars to play hockey which i know is unfair it's to scale like it's him comparing himself to other hockey players but certainly this one being hurt over that contract offer and it being made public is just again a little much for me when his agent, I think, is way out of bounds and the Bruins felt they're at with wit's end, so Neely pulled kind of a dick move himself. I mean, let's face it, going public with the numbers. Definitely. And then fudging the numbers, kind of a weasel move. Yeah, which but, he knew when he did it. Which is, hey, Jeremy, as you would know, it's business. So now we, gotta, so now we have to find out where Jeremy Swayman is, not just financially, but the disappointment, the reparation of the relationship, the resentment, the hurt. We got to see where he is on this. Which I'm sorry, I'm not here for. Yeah, right. I, just, I, I don't I care. I, I, I really don't. I can't help you. I am. It's a personal failing of mine. Uh, my my sympathy meter is poor. It's always been. I'm not a partip- particularly empathetic man, and it's a failing of mine. It really is. I'm not even being a. I'm not even being facetious. But especially when we're talking about you being bent out of shape over an offer that would make you one of the highest paid goalies in the history of the sport. I just, I feel very little empathy for you or or, or the fact that the team decided to go hardball and, you know, kind of call you out a little bit. I I just, I'm sorry. I I can't, what little sympathy I have in me. It it doesn't go to you, but don't you understand? I want to be one, not five, (laughs) one. I'm hurt by that. It's he's. I think he's. I'm with you on this. I I have no sympathy for how he is handling this negotiation. Well, and the other thing is too, if if he and his agent have half a brain, his agent or someone is saying to him, "Hey, look, don't think it's going to be any different with any other team. They're going to compare you to certain players and try to keep the number at a certain level. And if they don't, if they're willing to give him whatever he wants, well, then they're a suck organization, like you know uh, the the Maple Leafs." who keep paying guys out the ass and suck. Including his last holdout. So, oh, right, Nylander. Nylander was Nylander. Yeah, yeah, Nylander. And I think he got 11 and a half. He did get 11 and a half. I think the, the, the Leafs caved and gave him every dime. I think that's right. Which is ridiculous. Yeah. And and so, like, it, it is. It and, and look at them. They're completely out of whack. They have been for some time. They're top-heavy in, in many ways. They obviously have high-paid guys, but they're all in the same positions. On top of it, they're all forwards. Their forwards are paid out the ass. Like, so whatever, getting off track. But the fact is, look, this is how it goes, pal. This is how the, the CBA is set up for this reason. So one last piece of sound, Elliot Freeman, which is at 1.5. We're trying to figure out the right speed for all these guys. Evan Lazar needs to go down to point point seven five. Definitely, yeah. We gotta we gotta uh, slow him down. He's a fast talker. Correct. He's like the FedEx fast talker right. from the old commercial. We gotta take him down to point seven five. Correct. Bedard needs a bump. One and a quarter. One point two five for Bedard. Yep. Freeman. Needs, oh, he's one point five. He needs three. He's a full one point five. It just works better. Here's Freeman, the second. I'd consider two. turbo for him. <laughs> yes, give, me, give it to me, Jimmy. All right, Swayman, Bruins. No, no, give me the second one. I think one. the Bruins. Could you give me the second one, the second of the two? No? Friedman. Second of the two? Second of the two. There's one's Freeman cut. 
Okay, well, the second half of it. Never mind. We don't got to hear the whole thing. Even at 1.5, it's too much. They're going to get back talking again. I don't know if they have anything scheduled. I don't know where this is going to go. The one thing I did know was that after what happened Monday, everybody was going to have a cooling off period to figure out where they want to do. Was Swayman still wanting to be a Bruin or would he ask for a trade? I think we're still getting through that process now of coming back to the table whenever that's going to be. I still think at this point in time, I'm not convinced Swayman's going to take eight times eight. So, and again, I think his choice is to be a Bruin, although, you know, the, the other day was certainly emotional. So we're kind of at a standstill again right now, Kyle. I'm not sure where we go from here, though I just don't think we're close enough yet for a deal. The way the Bruins look at it, they've moved a long way. The way Swayman moves, it looks at it, he's moved too. I still think we need another move. Someone's got to move again to get this done. And I don't know where it's going to come from. He's not going to take eight eight times eight. And it was an emotional day. And again, we're dealing with the emotional part of it. He's still getting through the process, Jim. Yeah. There's a cooling off period that he needs to get his emotions in check, probably. <sighs> These, it's I, I, I lump him in. Because he was hurt. Yeah. Him, Mac Jones, Tristan Cassis. There's just guys like, I. you're not fits here. You're too, just. It's too much. Yeah, it's all too much. It's, it's a good too much. point, Murray. Too much, man. The 25-year-old Gen Zer, Boston, not the right place. <laughs> it's just, it doesn't, I have a hard time with it. I really do. Wow. <sighs> 64 million at so-and-so. <sighs> and again, he has like a burn book, like a teen girl from uh, Mean Girls. Oh, you don't think I can perform in the playoffs? Check. <laughs> You've made the list. <sighs> and as I said yesterday, news for you, Jeremy Swayman. We don't expect any Bruin to perform in the playoffs. That's the Bruins' experience. Get over yourself. You're all going to fail in the playoffs. That's the Bruins. <gasps> Check. <laughs> the jerk on the radio. <sighs> Heard you. Check. <laughs> he's not going to take eight times eight. Yeah. I don't think he's going to take eight times eight. It's what it I is. never thought it would get to eight. So, j- right, That's it, a great number for it, this dude. It shouldn't be even eight. So, like, I'm here for the drama of that. Are they going to come up, or is he just going to take it? You know, like I'm. I, I hope. I hope we have a winner and a loser. I mean, we, we're going to. If the Bruins give him eight point two, I'll be pissed. Yeah, it's too much. Like, to stick to your guns. <laughs> no, I would agree. You, you're in the right on this one. Uh, for once, in, a, in one of the true rarities, most fans are on your side. Okay, like that almost never happens with any player versus team. Never mind the Bruins and all their history. But this is like a rare case where you. I think most fans, not all, but most. 51% are with you on this one. Stick to your guns. And I mean, hope that Corpusalo doesn't suck. You pointed this out before. They they took Ray Bork to arbitration, and he got over it. Right. He is arguably like the second or third greatest defenseman of all time. When they wanted to give one of the greatest players in the history of the sport, like $4 million bucks or whatever it was at the time. And he, he was just fine. This guy got offered... Like, if not a record-setting contract, certainly an unprecedented contract for a guy of his experience level and his accomplishments. No one who's played as little as he has and accomplished as little as he has has gotten that kind of offer. So it it is, in some respects, a market-setting offer. And he's disappointed. It's not fair. He's been hurt. He's pissed. We need to worry about the reparation of the relationship. I'm just giving you all the reports that, yeah, again, right. he's... It, reparation. It's emotional. There was resentment. We're in a cooling off period. He's getting through the process after being offered one of the best contracts a goalie's ever been offered in the history of the sport. Reparation, like it's the Civil War. I the mean, guy run down that list. The, 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 the guy who's won one playoff round. Yes, go ahead. I mean, that sounds like what you deal with with a pain in the ass girlfriend. Again, run through that list again. Like it's again, just... I said, so I, I wrote down all these reports yeah. that we just Elliot Freeman, Pierre LeBrun, his own words, his agent. I just wrote down all the things that we played this segment. The agent said it's disappointed. I'm disappointed. He's disappointed. I'm disappointed. It's not fair. If this isn't fair. Uh, Pierre Lebrun said he's hurt. I'm hurt. We now need to worry about the reparation of the relationship. How are we going to repair this? <laughs> Again, this is an emo- over emotional, like. Pain. Elliot Freeman said it's emotional. If this has been emotional, do you know what you're doing to me? Uh, Jeremy Sw- Swayman said in his own words, 
about the resentment that he carried about the previous arbitration hearing. I don't know if I'm ever going to get over this. I I resent you. He also said last year that it was something that he never would wish on anyone, that he would wish no one would ever have to go through what he went through. How overdramatic. Freeman said we're now in a cooling off period (laughs) and that we're getting through the process. You go sleep in the other room. We're in a cooling (laughs) off period. All over being offered $64 million. One of the best offers in the history of the sport at his position. For a guy who's never played more than, like, what, 45 games? 43 games. games or Give me a break 44. with this guy. Give me a break. If you like that clip, check out more videos from Felger and Maz here. For more Bruins analysis and opinion, hit this playlist. And for all the latest from the Sports Hub, download the app at 98.5thesportshub.com.